change any color with high precision. Hello, my friends, how are you doing? Today, I have an amazing method for you that brings back the artistic control for your AI creations and introduces a lot of variation because with this, you can change any color for the hair, for the dress, for the background, for anything you want. Now, this is building on a video by Sebastian Kamp. I tried out the method and then I adapted it to a different method specialized on color. And of course, also is a little bit more involved because you need an external image editor. But don't worry about that. You can use GIMP. It's completely for free. Let's get started here. So to start this off, to make things easier for you, one of the tricks I want to show here is when you prepare the image, you want to already give colors to the parts you want to change later on. This is why she has a red dress and blue hair. So the AI has an easier way to pick out these colors. Also, with the prompt, I defined that I want to have a neutral background here with no patterns, no structures, no architecture in it. So in the prompt, I'm writing in a red dress, blue hair, and then also I'm writing in front of a gray studio wall. Of course, you have to reroll a little bit until you get the background and the composition you want. But of course, for the pose, you can always use the open pose editor. As I've shown in this video before, check that out. It's pretty cool. At this point, we're going into the image editor. Now you can use GIMP here. I'm using a software called Affinity Photo 2. It's very affordable. It is an alternative to Photoshop and you don't have a subscription. You only buy it once. Now at this point, what you want to do here is to separate out the different layers for the background, the dress, the skin and the hair. This is very easy to do. Select the image layer here. Then on the top left, you see the selection brush tool. Click on that and then brush over the dress. You see, very easy to select. Up here, you want to click on refine and then on apply. This makes the selection a little bit better. Now at this step, we are going to click down here to add a new pixel layer. We are going to go over here on the left side to select the brush and we can pick a color. Now it's important to pick different colors just so you see what the different layers are doing. After we've done this, we simply paint this area here and we can now also rename the layer as dress. Next, we are going to press Ctrl D on the keyboard, select the image again, select the selection brush again. And now we're doing the same thing here with the skin. So you want to go over these parts like so, include this a little bit. And then you see we have a little bit more here from the hair. So up here is a subtract button. Click on that and then deselect the hair again. Click on refine, click on apply, create a new layer. This layer I'm creating under the dress. So here now we have our new pixel layer. Again, I'm choosing a color. In this case, you want to specifically select the skin color. Of course, again, paint this over the image like so. Control D to deselect. Click again on the image. Selection brush. Don't forget to click on the add mode instead of the subtract mode. So you have that activated. Then you want to go over the hair here and down here and you want to click on refine. In that case, we want to make it a little bit finer. So in the refine mode, just go over the outer edges of your hair. You can see this is making a better selection and then click on apply. Now we want to create another layer on top of the skin layer. So click on the dress layer and then click on add pixel layer. After we've selected this again, pick a color, click on the brush and then paint in the hair color. Now you can see down here, we have missed a little bit. So make your brush smaller and then simply paint that in. It doesn't have to be super precise. It just has to be roughly in the area where the parts are you want to change. Now I'm going to click again on the background image and I'm going to click over here on the rectangle tool because I'm setting up a gradient in the background now. So I'm dragging the rectangle here and then we have here also the gradient tool. Click on that and drag out the gradient like so. To change the color of the gradient, click up here on fill and then you have these two dots here. So click on one of them and let's say we're going here for a brighter green. Let's make this a little bit less saturated like so. And then we click over here on the black dot and select the color. Let's go here for a darker green like so. Okay. 
So now we have a certain setup, but of course you want to be able to change these colors quickly. So what you want to do here in Affinity Photo is to click on the dress layer. Down here is an FX symbol. You click on that. This is a pop-up you get. And here you want to select color overlay. Now with this, I can simply overlay a different color, anything I want onto the dress. For the hair, we're doing the same thing. Select the pixel layer, click on FX, select the color overlay, and then you can select any kind of color you want. At this point, you can also see that we missed a little bit of the skin here. So we want to click on the skin layer, select the skin color again, select the brush again, and then simply paint that in over here. Now you want to export this, file, export, save it as a JPEG and simply export. Now here's another thing I want you to do. Take the background, pull it to the top. So this is sitting on top. Then go down here to the adjustment layers, click on that, select HSL. And in here you want to desaturate the image. So the image is black and white because we don't want to have an interference from the original colors. We only need the model and the specific details for the canny mode. So again, file, export, and then export this as a JPEG. Now we are ready to render. Now the first thing you want to do here is with this image in all of the settings still loaded, you want to click here to send to image to image. So everything here is loaded in the exact same way. You want to delete the image here, so click on the X and then load the color map that we have prepared. Next, you want to scroll down and you have here your first control net. If you don't know how to make multi-control net, check out this video where I show you how to do that. You want to open that up and you want to load the black and white image. We're going to enable this. We're going to set it to Kenny preprocess model Kenny. This will bring all of the details of our original image into our render. Next, we are going down here to the control net one. Open that up. You want to load here the image with the color that you prepared. You want to enable the control net. We're going to set this to depth layers over here for the model to depth. And then for your remove background, you want to set this to around 83, but you have to experiment with your own settings. Another setting you want to do here is to set your denoise strength to 0 0.5. After we've rendered this, you can see that now this is our result. Now I'm going to show you also how to introduce different colors and patterns into the background. For this, you can, for example, go to a page like Unsplash, where you find a lot of images. Here we have an abstract background. I want to click on that. You can download it, but you can also just copy this over because we're starting with a low resolution image. So right click copy image. Then we're going back into Affinity Photo. Click on your green rectangle, control V to copy this in here. And of course you can move the background around and change it any way you want. In this case, let's give her a red dress. So let's click here on FX, control overlay and on the color and we're going to select red and we're going to export this again. We're going back into our image to image tab and we're going to replace this image here. And also we are scrolling down. We want to replace this image, but because now we have a structure in the background, a pattern, we need to also change our processing mode. So click here on the X, load the image like so, then go down here and select MLSD for the pre-process and also MLSD for the model. Another thing, if the colors are not working correctly for you is to go into the prompt and also change the colors here in the text. So for example, here, let's write red dress. Click on generate and you can see that now we have the pattern in the background. We have changed the color of the dress and everything has adjusted pretty nicely here. Now I want to show you another trick that you can do here. Let's go back to Affinity Photo. Let's click here on the image background, right click, duplicate that background because we want to have a safe backup. Now you're going to go over here to filters and to lighting. What we can do with this is that here we have a light source simulated inside of Affinity Photo. You can move that around. The light is a little bit dim, but what you can do here is you can add multiple light sources. So you can just move this also up here. So now you can see we have a strong light in the background. You click on apply. This is now rendered into the layer. In this case, let's also change the hair to green. So we have a little bit more variation here. 
Now, the reason why I'm adjusting just the background, not the overall image with the light effect is because that would then also change the colors in the hair and the dress. And I don't want to have that again, export and go back to image to image, change this layer and also change the layer down here for our second control net. We are also now changing up here in our text, the hair color from blue to green. So simply to help the AI a little bit better to understand what we want to do. And as you can see here with our result, the hair color has changed. And of course, also the background lighting. Now here's a last awesome trick I want to show you today. Let's go back into affinity photo. We're going to disable these two layers here. And in that case, let me turn the background into blue. And now I want to do two things. First of all, I'm going to change the mode here from linear to elliptical. Then I'm using my gradient tool over here. You see, you have these handles now. So I'm moving this over to the middle and then you can also move this handle closer into the image so that now we have here a brighter part in the middle and then it's getting darker towards the outside. Here comes the second thing. We're going to go over here to our rectangle tool and we're going to drag out another rectangle. This also already has the gradient in there, but I don't want to have that. So I click here on the fill and I click here on this white with the red line. So it removes the fill. Then we want to click on the stroke and I'm going to turn the stroke into white. And next to it, we have the thickness. So I will make the stroke thicker. Let's go like so. Now I want to have a glow effect on that white. So for that, I'm clicking here on FX. I'm going to select outer glow, turn that on, and then I'm moving up the radius of the outer glow. Now this gives me two glowing lights in the background. Close that. And then I have here my rectangle. When I go to the corners, you can see that my mouse turns into these arrows. So I can move this now sideways. And also when I click on the line here, I can move this up and down. Let's just for the giggles change the hair color again here, make it a little bit more stronger for the pink. Then we go to file export again, image to image mode, load the image up here, load the image down here. We're going to set up here our hair color to pink in that case and click on render. And you can see in this case, we do have the glowing lights in the background, but the hair is a little bit too pink. So let's try pop violet hair in the prompt instead. And you can see that now we have these two white stripes in the background. It added also a little bit of other elements here. But if that happens, you can actually change the seat and try for re-rolling. So let's set the seat here to random and try again. And you can see that now with the random seed, we actually have a result that's much closer to what we want to have. Let me know in the comments what you think. Thank you for watching. Leave a like if you enjoyed this video and see you soon. Bye. Oh, you're still here. So uh, this is the end screen. There's other stuff you can watch like this or that's really cool. And yeah, I hope I see you soon. Uh, leave a like if you haven't yet. And well, um, yeah.